The Grand Prix will be run, of course, this afternoon at Silverstone, as it has been for the last half century. So why the pressure now to change? In a moment, we'll be talking to the head of Formula One's governing body, Max <coughs> Mosley. But first, the former world champion Damon Hill has stopped off on his way to Silverstone in Oxford, and he joins me now from there. Damon, welcome. Good morning. Morning, Peter. Um, Nigel Mansell says Formula One is now so boring, he can't even bear to watch it on television. Uh, do you share that view? Uh, I don't think he's alone in that view, and I think that uh, it's a, a view that actually is held by a lot of the viewers, unfortunately. It has to be said, there's a lot of hype about Formula One. It's very good at generating hype, as you just saw from the, uh, the piece about the British Grand Prix being held in London. And it all sounds very exciting, but the, the, the real meat of the entertainment has to be the racing. And uh, something has gone a little bit awry there. So what would you do about it? I mean, was it any different when you were um, still uh, working? You only retired five years ago. Um, yes, well, I, I hesitate to suggest that it was more exciting when I was leading a race. Um, uh, I did have a couple of healthy leads a few times, and that can be quite boring to watch, although it was very good for me. Um, but, um, you know, you can, you can uh, say that the, I think that in the, the period since the death of Ayrton Senna, um, there's been a kind of degrading of the entertainment coming from the drivers. And that's not the fault of the drivers at all. I think that's really the fault um, of the organisation, the way the emphasis has changed. Um, and it's, it's a much safer sport than it ever was. But um, there used to be more emphasis on the, on the drivers themselves, who were more charismatic, um, not including myself, of course. Um, but, um, you know, names like Nigel Mansell, they're very outspoken people, and they provided a lot of what um, the people who turn on, of the fans, want to see. Well, I'll come back to you, Damon. Just, just hang on there in Oxford. Uh, Max Mosley, welcome. Good morning, Max. Um, you announced uh, your retirement a, a couple of weeks ago, and there was speculation. You're a bit fed up with the way the sport's going as well, um, and the politics of the sport, a sport that's lost its way. Is there any truth in that? Well, not, not, not really. No, the reason I want to stop is that there are all sorts of very interesting other things to do. There's a whole other side to the FIA to do with road safety worldwide and so on. I want to get involved in that. We've got a foundation with a lot of money to do that sort of work. And I feel I've done all I can, really, with the racing and the Formula One. But you're leaving them with, with some parting proposals to try and improve it, try and, try and, well, not speed it up, but make it more, more exciting, more of a contest. Well, actually, to slow it down. I mean, <laughs> the thing is that uh, Damon, I mean, the old drivers always say it was better in the old days. And in Damon's time, then it was the previous generation. The pre it's always like that. The fact is that television figures are a record, attendance figures are a record. I mean, we're watching a sporting phenomenon because Schumacher and Ferrari are completely outstanding, though it may not be the case in Silverstone. But that said, I think it, it, it's got to the point now with the cars where they're absolutely on the limits of what can be done. So we're going to slow them down. In the end, we don't want people killed. That's absolutely fundamental. And one of the criticism that it's become more business than sport, that, cars, that the cars are little more than mobile advertising hoardings that favour these F Formula One circuses in third world countries where they're not so fastidious about tobacco advertising? Well, that criticism has been going now for almost 40 years when Lotus at the end of the 60s started having commercial advertising, actually in that case tobacco, and it's just gone on. The fact is that all top level world sport has a big business element. You simply can't run it without a lot of money. And of course the top performers are very highly paid. But that's part of international sport. There's plenty of sport where people are not paid and which is a lower level. It's not what the public want to watch. Now, Bernie Eccleston, the head of Formula One, uh, this week appeared to use the prospect of a London Grand Prix as a stick to beat Silverstone with. But looking at London as, as a separate project and possibility, does it strike you as something that could happen? Well, it's a wonderful idea, and it, it would be very, very exciting to have a Grand Prix in London, but I don't think the people talking about it really understand what's involved. You'd have to resurface all the roads, remove all the street furniture, put up three rows of Armco on either side, put up a debris fence able to catch a Grand Prix car all the way around the circuit, not to mention pits, grandstands, and it's an enormous undertaking. It could be done but it would be very expensive. And all the cars would get parking tickets as well. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Max Mersey, thank you, thank you very much. Back to Damon Hill. Uh, Damon, what's your take on this uh, London Grand Prix idea? Well, I have, to, I have to admit being completely biased, having spent about uh, three years of my youth being, working as a dispatch rider, 
and uh, I always considered um, Hyde Park Corner through Belgrave Square as uh, making uh, an across a serpentine would have been a fantastic Grand Prix track. But as Max rightly says, um, the logistics are, are something to, to uh, consider. And, of course, they'd have to play congest congestion charge on top of that. And it would take weeks to set up the whole all the apparatus required, wouldn't it? You'd have to close the place down for a week or two. Well, I think with Monaco, they start something like uh, two months in advance, and, and Monaco doesn't exactly have the same volume of traffic as London does. And nobody works there. And uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll make do with Silverstone, which isn't a bad track, is it? Um, Silverstone uh, can be very exciting. I think... Um, it's, uh, it's a very spread out track. I mean, they've tried fiddling with it for years, but really the, the point of it is it doesn't matter what the track is like. If the cars are racing and uh, from the start to the finish, you don't know who's going to win, which isn't the case at the moment because at the start, you kind of know Michael Schumacher is going to win. Um, contrary to what Max says, I don't think people turn on to see Michael Schumacher win every time. I certainly don't. So um, who's, uh, who are they going to turn on to see win today then? Well, Jensen Button, of course. Damon Hill, Max Mosley. Thank you both very much.